in spite of what other bushcrafters like to show you, there's really nothing to that, guys. Uh, it just took a dead limb, made it into a bird's nest, added a little cotton. No fancy woodwork, no splitting, no batoning, no feather sticks, no nothing. Just a wad of fucking wood. Uh, the only reason uh, bushcrafters go through all that mumbo jumbo uh, and give you 20 minutes at the beginning of a video doing their wood processing is because they need content for their video uh, to make it a little bit longer. Me, I just took a dead branch, watered it up into a ball, let that son bitch on fire. It's as simple as that. I don't know why everybody needs a fucking seven step process just to make ice cubes. Uh, whenever you're out in the wilderness, uh, you don't want to be wasting all that fucking energy on wood processing just to fucking show off for the camera. You just need to get the goddamn job done. Uh, you just saw it right there. I did it uncut. Just a, you know, balled a dead limb up, you know, real fine uh, twigs on that limb, uh, and lit the bitch up. Don't have to be fancy about it all the fucking time. TA Outdoors, I hope you're watching this. You are the master of wood processing for all day long. How many calories do you think you're burning up doing that every fucking time you do it? Surprised you don't die of starvation. Add your thicker wood to the pile. And again, not batoning him down or anything like that. Just throwing full rounds on there. They burn just fucking fine. Needed to get it warm in the wiki up today because, as I said earlier, I got full blown flu. So, uh, I'm kind of turning the wiki up into a bit of a sweat lodge. A lot of the time that I'm spending out here today is just tending to this fire. I don't think a lot of people uh, admit that. That whenever they're out in the wilderness, almost the entire time after they get a fire going, uh, they're just constantly tending to the fire. Uh, and they don't realize how much energy they're burning up tending to that damn fire. Uh, I mentioned earlier whenever I started this one, I just grabbed a dead limb, balled it up in my hand, and that was my bird's nest. Nothing fancy about it. Uh, added a cotton ball in there, used a striker, sparked it up, fire is going. No 20, 30 minutes of wood processing, no 
axe work, no batoning, no feather sticks, none of that fancy shit you can see these guys doing all the time. I didn't need content for a video. I needed to get a damn fire going. Uh, and so that's all I did. It took me three minutes to start this damn fire up, and I already got my uh, hot water damn near boiling with it. Why guys insist on going through all of these uh, wood processing steps all the damn time? I, I just don't. I don't you know, it's their thing, I guess. Uh, they just like playing with their woody. Uh, but anyway, I didn't have the time or energy to, to do that kind of shit today. I'm out here. It's 25 degrees outside this wiki up. Uh, I got full-blown flu. Um, I actually had an alternate introduction to this video. Uh, but I don't think that I'm going to need it. Uh, we got down here at camp. Uh, and we just got this fired up. And we're getting settled in here. I'm waiting on my tea, to, tea water to start boiling. Hold on. And to get a little bit warmer here in the wiki up. Uh, like I mentioned there, uh, I jinxed myself a few days back, at least an episode of Redneck Road, where I was talking about my wife currently has the flu. And uh, in the episode of Redneck Road, I was talking about how, you know, my immune system's a little bit higher, it's almost impossible for me to get sick. Well, I jinxed myself, because about two days after I released that video, uh, I got sick with the flu. She gave it to me. Uh, I'm on my third day of it now. Uh, last night, before coming out this morning, uh, it was high fever on and off. I slept on the couch. My wife was crashed out in the bed. We were both just miserable as hell. Uh, and I gotta be honest with you guys, uh, right now it feels like my fucking lungs are on fire. My, uh, my throat feels like I've been drinking acid for a week. Uh, and I have aches, muscle tension, and aches everywhere. I am not in good shape. So, uh, I was sitting at home last night and I was thinking, you know, are you gonna go out and film an episode of Huntsman with, you know, this level of flu going on uh, you're gonna risk getting yourself sicker doing it uh, you know all that shit going through my head and I was like you know what if it was a survival situation or if I was out here for an extended stay and I happened to get sick this is exactly how I would be feeling this is a real-time real-life experience of what it's like uh, being at camp with the flu <coughs> sorry uh, I might cough here and there. It's just going to pop up. I don't want to edit it out every damn time I cough. Uh, so yeah, if I was out here for an extended period of time and I happen to get sick, uh, this is what I would be going through. Uh, and I know that uh, trying to tend this fire and all that shit, uh, I'm going to have to do that with as little energy as possible. Because my energy restores are already uh, exhausted from fighting off the uh, virus. So uh, I get to consider a lot of things in this uh, real time, real life scenario. Here I am, 25 degree day. I'm out at my camp. Come down with the flu. This is what I have to deal with. This is real life. Uh, you can't, you can't uh, fake this and put it into a safe little bubble scenario. Uh, if you get the full bone flu, chances are you ain't going to leave your damn house. You're going to stay home. You're going to stay medicated. You're going to stay warm and toasty eating chicken noodle soup. Uh, me, I get full blown flu. I'm out in the woods because I want to see what it's like out in the woods with the fucking full blown flu. Uh, that way, if I ever am in a uh, survival uh, situation, or if I ever am stuck out in the middle of the wilderness and I happen to get sick, I know what to expect. Uh, so this is. Uh, a masochistic trial run uh, I didn't have to do it but if I didn't do it there's no way that I could fake this situation you either do it whenever you're sick or you don't do it at all now that I got a good fire going there uh, there's really no smoke at all in the wiki up uh, the heat's built up enough in here where it's just pushing the smoke right out the hole at the top which is what it's designed to do Not 
a bad day out here for having the flu, I've got to admit. And you see how I'm doing the fire there. I'm just kind of pyramiding it to where all the heat's focused in one point of the wood. Uh, and it just keeps it going. Less maintenance. Oh, guys. I gotta tell you, it's hard to breathe. And it's, like I said, it's not smoky in here at all. Uh, I can, there's barely any smoke coming off this fire. That's pretty good uh, wood there. Water's about done. Just maintaining. <coughs> A few days back, uh, I released the, uh, released a picture on social media a couple of my uh, Facebook groups and I was talking about whenever you come out to the wilderness you want to be lazy uh, you don't want to go through all the shit that you see these big bushcrafting channels going through every single time they go out to the woods they have to basically cut down a goddamn tree and process it up so they can fix a breakfast bagel and you saw me right here I just wad up a fucking limb and uh, my shit is on um, They go out there and they do all that stuff because uh, they're showboating a little bit and they need content for their video They want to get that video up to a certain amount of time because they're out here trying to make money While they're out here trying to make money, I'm out here trying to fucking get warm uh, So I guess it's just a matter of where your fucking priorities lie uh, But I released this uh picture and I said the first rule of survival is to be lazy uh, don't burn up any more energy than you absolutely have to that's exactly what I did in this situation and I did it because I got the damn flu I don't have the energy reserves to be out here showboating trying to make a longer fucking video uh, and how many times do you guys need to see wood processed or you know any of that other bullshit that they want to show you every fucking single time they go out uh, I just needed to get the wiki up warm. 25 degrees outside is probably a good uh, 50, 60 degrees in here now. And the fire's only been going for a little while. My tea's almost ready. Got to keep the oxygen going to the fire. More flame, less smoke. <coughs> <coughs> that's not from the smoke, that's from the flu. Uh, blowing on the fire just my lungs are on fire I probably shouldn't be breathing all of this smoke but I'm going to be breathing a different kind of smoke here in a minute anyway <coughs> so uh, I released that video or that photo uh, telling people whenever you get out to the wilderness be lazy don't be going through all of these fucking fancy ass steps trying to process wood burning up all of those calories uh, those are the guys that are never going to fucking make it. You want to do this as efficiently as possible, not uh, whatever's good for the camera. That's what I did today. I actually can't be using all of my water. I need it for something else.
So now that I got it warm here in the wiki up, I didn't want this to uh, burn down to a coal bed uh, and uh, start working its way down. And while that's doing that, I'm going to set that stone right there in the middle of it. I need to get that stone hot. This is a uh, elderberry tea. Uh, it's really high in antioxidants. Hoping it'll help make me feel better. Uh, it'll at least replenish uh, some of the fluids that I lost on the hike down here. Because I got my core temperature really high on the hike down. Add that on top of the fever, all that sweating and everything. Uh, it's going to be taxing. Uh, and I don't want to be getting dehydrated while I'm out here. Last thing that I need right now. A little bit too much of a draft coming in, so I had to shut the door to the wiki up here. It's going to be a little bit darker, but I think we'll be all right with that. I need to get it a little bit warmer in here anyway. So I'm letting that fire burn down a little bit, and then I'm going to be adding water to it uh, just a little bit at a time to make some steam, and it'll basically turn the wiki up into a sweat lodge. Uh, hopefully uh, doing that will uh, get my temperature up a bit, I'll start sweating, uh, and it'll end up making me feel better. So what I have here, this is a bundle of white sage, uh, and if you burn white sage, uh, it's called smudging. Burning white sage, um, the resins and the smoke from this herb will kill about 94-95% of all the viruses and bacteria in the air, and scientific studies have shown that after a house or a confined space is smudged with white sage, viruses and bacteria still did not return to that area for a full month after the smoke was released. So Native Americans use this for spiritual reasons and also for healing purposes. Uh, there's herbs and plants all over the world uh, used for the same kind of thing. Uh, in Christianity it's frankincense. Uh, Native American and a lot of neo-pagan uh, circles it's white sage. I've used white sage for the better part of 20 years now uh, and it's always worked out for me. This is always something that I have handy or something that I can get access to uh, nearby uh, and I actually have a story for this particular bundle here that I'll get to here in a second. Uh, so after the fire dies down a little bit and it gets a little bit warmer in here, it's actually pretty close now. We can start adding some steam and uh, turning our uh, wiki up into a sweat lodge. Well, that's a pretty sight. Got just enough of a gap in that door to let some light in. Not enough to let the air in. Enough to ventilate the uh, wiki up, of course. You need a draft from some area. Uh, fresh air comes in across the floor, pushes the smoke up out the top. Principles working. So, uh, I actually got this particular bundle of sage at a local pagan shop. Uh, the woman who runs the shop is a practicing witch, 
I went in there, and I've shopped there before. I've gotten sage, um, nag chomp, and incense from Tibet, uh, a few other things in there. And I went to talk to them about uh, the value of the rose quartz crystals that I were finding because they sell a lot of crystals there. Um, but I walked into the shop yesterday, <coughs> and uh, she come out from behind the counter, and uh, she said, "You look like hell." And I said, "Yeah, I need some. I need a bundle of sage. I need a smudge stick." And she goes, "Okay." So she takes me to the back, and she has them all in this crystal bowl, about 30 of them, right? And she goes, "You want to pick which one?" And I was like, "Nah." I said, "It don't matter." So she picked me this one, and uh, she asked me if I was all right, and I told her what was going on. And she said, "Well, this one's on me. I uh, hope it helps." So. Uh, that was the story behind this particular smudge stick. I owe that girl a lot. I'll probably drop off one of the crystals to her as an exchange. Uh, if somebody gives you a gift, uh, no matter how simple it is, you should always take something back in return. So as I was saying there, uh, smudging with white sage kills over 90% of all the viruses and bacteria in a confined space, which is why a lot of people use it in their homes. Uh, Aside from clearing out negative energy, evil spirits, all that kind of thing, um, science has proven that it also uh, wards off viruses and bacteria for at least a month after it's burned. So being in a confined space like a wiki up, uh, now that it's good and hot in here and getting a little bit steamy, uh, it's going to be a lot more potent in this small of a space than it would be. Uh, say in my house so we're going to go ahead and uh, smudge ourselves with white sage uh, breathe in a lot of that sage smoke um, and hopefully between the heat the humidity uh, and the sage smoke it'll help me clear myself of this flu and I'll be feeling a lot better whenever I walk out of this than I did whenever I walked in
It is very hot in here now. Oh, the humidity jumped up quick. A uh, hot stone under the fire. Uh, added a little water to it and the steam rolled up. Smoke went out, but it seemed like the steam stuck right to the shoulder. Now we're doing this kind of a thing uh, as I'm smudging uh, and adding more steam to the wiki up. I want to be able to stay inside this environment for about an hour. So it's very hot, it's very smoky, it's steamy. Uh, it's, a, it's a challenge. Um, sometimes it burns your eyes, sometimes it feels like you're choking but it's important to stay inside um, and keep breathing this uh, air, keep breathing the smoke from the white sage. Uh, it's the only way you're going to heal. As far as the aches and pains, uh, the fever, uh, the burning in the lungs, all of those symptoms that you consider annoyances are signs that your body's still fighting off the infection. Uh, whenever you stop feeling those things and you're not getting better, that's when you're in a lot of trouble. So here I am in a sauna of a wiki up, uh, burning a smudge stick, drinking elderberry tea and about to smoke a pipe of Captain Black. Uh, clean air. Yeah. You guys are pretty much seeing what I'm seeing right there at that angle. That would be a pretty good view. You don't need to be looking at me, right? <coughs> so, sorry about that. Uh, yes, I did just hack and cough and uh, spit it out. That's what's happening to me right now. I'm not going to edit that out. It's reality of the situation. Uh, since I started this little process, 
my lungs are uh, all of the congestion in my lungs is already starting to break up I've only been in here for about uh, 37 minutes now uh, and I'm already it's already uh, being <coughs> sorry it's already being like uh, ejected from my body um, all of the impurities in my lungs uh, my sinuses are starting to drain all of that stuff is happening to me right now it's not pleasant and it's not pretty and it's probably not something you want to see on a, a wilderness survival video but that's what's really going on right now guys which is another one of the reasons I don't have the camera on me because I probably look like death warmed over uh, but it is working uh, I just gotta keep that stage going a little bit and uh, stick to it we're almost there another 20 minutes or so and we should be good to go get back outside got to admit man she gave me a very tightly bound uh, bundle of white sage it keeps wanting to go out now it's not meant to burn like an incense it's meant to actually go out so you have to keep blowing on it or using a feather or wafting it around like this keep that airflow going to it or it will snuff itself out uh, which is good where you don't have to worry about starting a fire but uh, for healing purposes like this it can feel a little annoying trying to keep the sage bundle going while you're trying to concentrate on just breathing in the smoke and getting all of the toxins out of your body uh, but do apologize guys that uh, this segment of this episode is not much to look at. You got my kooks of elderberry tea here and uh, a smoldering steaming fire and a bundle of white sage. Not much as far as visual effects go, but uh, this is the reality of my situation right now. I'm out here trying to heal up and recover from a severe uh, flu and upper respiratory infection, and I'm doing that with uh, ancient uh, herbs uh, it's not any more complicated than that from getting the fire going and getting the wiki up nice and warm uh, building up the humidity inside the wiki up uh, getting the herbs uh, where I needed them to be uh, making the elderberry tea uh, and just keeping the sage bundle uh, smoking enough to where I can smell it inside of the wiki up um, I don't have to keep it going the entire time where I'm burning up the whole smudge stick, but I do need to uh, keep smoke present in the wiki up while I'm going through this process. Um, and like I said, I don't have the camera on me right now because I'm a hot mess. Um, and this is the only things that I'm using to uh, be able to combat this illness that I got. <laughs> Ugh, nothing complicated guys just is what it is mother nature's kitchen to be honest put a little elderberry on the fire why not and cool.
of well I think I needed that for more than just the flu and anybody who knows anything about smudging can understand why I haven't done that in too long I used to do it fairly often but uh I've gotten out of the practice ever since I did that though and came up out of the wiki up I am coughing and hacking up all kinds of nasties uh, you guys don't need to see that what you need to see is this check that out beautiful day out here guys it really is uh, I am honestly feeling a lot better now than I did uh, before I did that little ceremony there at the wiki up. So uh, basically what I did uh, here is uh, I used my wiki up as a sweat lodge. Uh, I was only in there for about an hour and a half total. So a half an hour to get everything set up. Uh, and get it warm in there, get, get it really warm in there, uh, and then uh, kind of started the more ritualistic part of uh, the practice. Uh, I got it as hot as I could inside the wiki up for the first part of the hour uh, while I was burning uh, sage, heating up my tea, uh, and then that bundle of sage I kept burning for the entire hour. Uh, wafting it over me every once in a while uh, and just kept the wiki up full of the sage smoke breathing it in as deeply as I could uh, and I reek of uh, wood and sage smoke now I can smell it um, anybody who's smudged before can tell you that the the smoke from white sage is very um, I kind of want to say sticky it just clings to you uh, and that's what you want it to do because the sage smoke um, those particles of sage smoke it's kind of like uh, has the same effect that uh, activated charcoal does uh, it just rids your body of all kinds of toxins viruses and bacteria since I'm out here on the third day of a severe flu and respiratory infection <coughs> <coughs> sorry uh, that sage smoke is clinging to those uh, uh, clusters in my lung. Oh, get down the hill here. That sage smoke is clinging to uh, the mucus and phlegm and the fluids build up in my lungs. Um, and it's helping me cough it all out. Whereas before, I wasn't doing it. It just wasn't breaking up at all. Uh, now I can at least breathe enough to get through the train when I was coming down here before I did the ceremony I could barely freaking move uh, I was tensing up quite a bit I still have some tension in my shoulders but not near as bad as uh, the hike down here I'm actually feeling pretty good right now uh, we're gonna go ahead take a quick look at the landscape here uh, we'll walk down here by the river I do have the yay old waterproof boots on, so I'm not worried about this creek at all. Uh, I am worried about the ice a little bit. It's iced up here where it's not flowing so heavy. The ice, uh, I walked across this earlier. It is heavy enough to hold my weight, but it is very slippery even with my winter boots on. Uh, so, just don't want to fall and bust my ass on the ice once I get out here. That's such a big problem. I'll tell you what, guys. These boots, best fucking investment I've ever made. And they really weren't that expensive. Uh, but the insulation, it's like 2,400 grams of insulation. Waterproof, heavy uh, traction. Uh, very, very awesome boots. Highly recommend that you get some. Just walk over here real quick. I'm actually going to have to bust into my backpack and get my gloves out. Uh, it's cold enough out here that the tripod is starting to burn my hands. And I'm already sick, so 
uh, the higher I can keep my body temperature while I'm hiking through this train, the better. Looks like I have some uh, Cody tracks coming down through here. No deer tracks down here by the river though. Just coyotes. Fuck. Whoa! Slipped on the ice. Oh, that's a pretty sight. Yeah. So I'm just gonna stop right here and get into my backpack real quick. Get my gloves out. I have to admit that uh, trying to operate the camera whenever you're wearing winter gloves, not fucking easy. So a smudge stick of white sage is probably not something that uh, anybody is going to tell you to have in your survival gear. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you to go ahead and uh, add that to your list. And the only reason uh, I'm telling you to add it to your list is because I just came out here and did it. Uh, you guys saw the effect. Um, or at least as best as I can explain it to you. Whenever I came down here, I could barely breathe. Uh, I do still have a uh, sore throat. Um, I know my glands are swollen. Um, and I have uh, some pressure, sinus pressure behind my eyes. All that comes with the flu. Uh, and it'll take some time for that to subside. But uh, the hot, steamy environment that I created inside of that wiki up and the sage smoke on top of it uh, really helped me out a lot. That sage smoke is an anesthetic. Uh, as I said previously, it will kill uh, 95, 96% of all viruses and bacteria within a confined space. And a month later, uh, no viruses or b bacteria are going to return to that confined space where the sage smoke was burnt at. Uh, that's just the effect that the herb has. That's science. Uh, that's not the superstitious part of it. Now, religious-wise, white sage um, is used for cleansing, um, making sacred spaces, but also cleansing negativity, uh, negative emotions, depression, anxiety, that kind of thing. It helps ground you back out. Uh, and that's also one of the uh, chemical properties of the herb. So uh, a little bundle of uh, white sage, a smudge stick, not a bad thing to have in your gear. Uh, even if you take a couple of leaves and put it in to your first aid kit, where if you do get into a situation like where I was at and uh, you want to purify your shelter, whether it's a wiki up or a tent, or any kind of enclosed space, uh, you can burn those leaves in there. Uh, just uh, light them on your campfire, set them off to the side and let them smolder. And that smoke will help purify the air. At least keep that air pure enough for you to breathe uh, healthy air during your stay. Uh, not a bad thing to have along. Elderberry tea, again, you use that down there at the uh, ceremony. Elderberry tea is just really uh, rich in antioxidants and it happens to taste good. So uh, that's the tea that I use today. Uh, I have a whole cabinet full of different teas at home. Some of them from the market and some of them from friends that actually make up their own blends. Uh, so now I have the challenge of taking on this climb out. I'm not going to film it guys. Uh, I'm going to focus on what's happening <coughs> sorry focus on what's happening with my body that don't need to be on film uh, this is uh, off camera this is just uh, my research my personal research um, of what I'm capable of doing 
after I do that smudging ceremony uh, with full-blown flu. I uh, might talk about it in the next episode a little bit. Uh, what we also have coming up is I'm going to be taking a break on uh, the Redneck Road add-in. And the reason I'm going to take a break from the Redneck Road add-in is because I don't want that little mini-series or, uh, you know, kind of a side stream to the channel to overwhelm the main show. And I... Th I just got the sense that that's what was going to happen if I kept going at the pace that I was going with that thing. Plus, I need to develop it a little bit more. So, uh, I'm cutting out Redneck Road, um, at least for a little bit. If I have a topic that's not work-related, something different that I can bring up while I'm on the road, I'll go ahead and film it. Uh, but I'm not just going to keep uh, doing the same thing. Like, uh, you know, I got off of work, I'm bitching about work, and... You know, that's the end of the episode. We're not going to do that. Uh, and that's just the way that uh, after I filmed it and I got it all uploaded, you know, I go back in there and I'm watching the series just like the rest of you guys. And that's the feeling that I got, that it was just already repetitive from the get. And uh, I don't want that happening, so I'm cutting it off right now. Uh, the other thing we're going to be changing is uh, about a month, maybe two months ago, uh, we moved the main show uh, to Tuesdays uh, and the reason we did that was we thought we could reach a different demographic if we posted Tuesday afternoon as opposed to Friday night what we found out since according to the analytics is there's really no change uh, there has been no change whatsoever as far as views for the Huntsman show uh, between Friday night at 8 and Tuesday at 3 so the time frame made no difference aside from the fact that I film on the weekends so in order to get an episode up on Tuesday I have to come out here and film get home and rush through the editing process and uploading it and all that stuff it gave me a very narrow time window to do that kind of thing uh, whereas before I had an entire week to sit down and tinker with it make sure everything was right so the other announcement is we will be moving the Huntsman show back to Friday night at 8 the original uh, day and time and we're going to start doing that with next week's episode uh, so next Tuesday uh, at 3 there's not going to be an episode of Huntsman you're going to have to wait until Friday uh, it makes it easier on me uh, cuts out a lot of the editing stresses and uh, opens up that time frame so redneck road is on pause for right now uh, we'll see if we can develop that a little bit more and get back to it uh, it was a good test run got a little bit of feedback to it uh, but I think that needs a lot more development before we can continue on uh, this is an evolutionary process guys you know how channels are uh, maybe we'll bring back redneck road maybe I'll decide not to I don't know. Uh, we'll just see what happens. So, those are the channel updates that are coming. Uh, I'll put out a reminder in the community section of those changes. And uh, I will catch you guys next time. See you all later.